With his final clue to Ciri's whereabouts in hand, it's time for Geralt to go back home to Care Morin. This chapter of the game is something of a palate cleanser. From the scenery, to the music, to the friendliness and familiarity of Geralt's fellow witchers, this section exudes warmth. For those who have played the first game and those who have read the books, there is an air of nostalgia too, one which is honed to drive home the themes at play throughout the quest here. The initial quests, helping Lambert source some power, hunting a forktail with Eskel, don't involve hard decisions or difficult battles. Later you can get the witchers drunk for some antics. It's fun and playful, the calm before the storm. But it's not without rocky waters. A return home for Geralt isn't as simple as visiting the old family cottage. Caer Morin is the crumbling seat of the wolf school, where witchers were trained and made. It's here that the infamous ritual where witchers are mutated, the Trial of Grasses, is performed. While the other witchers here may be the closest Geralt has to family, they're bound together by an exceptionally harsh upbringing. Each of the witchers wrestles, in their own way, with the lingering trauma of those experiences, and it's this pain that bubbles under the surface of Caer Morin's warmth and nostalgia. Helping Lambert gather elemental energy for the phylactery involves running through the same trial as when they were children, a set of obstacles through a cave on the way up a mountain. It's a chance for Geralt and Lambert to chat. Fog's thick as curdled milk. Never took you for a poet. Oh, but I am one. Want to hear a limerick? Sure. Lambert, Lambert, what a prick. Not bad. And reminisce about their youth. But while Geralt regards it with a matter of factness, Lambert is still clearly troubled. As the youngest of the witchers, he's closest to those events. But as we learn from him, his woes started before he was even taken to be a witcher, with an abusive father. Tell me, you always been such a cynical bastard? No. I was adorable before Vesemir brought me to care more him. We all went through it. That's just it. Not everyone made it. Lots of boys died here. Boys taken against their will. It was our destiny. Destiny? Let me tell you about destiny. My dad was a drunk. He'd knock a few back, then beat me and mom bloody. We prayed for his death every night. One day our prayers were almost answered. Dad lost his way coming home from the tavern, walked smack into a nest of neckers. But some witcher saved him. Know what he wanted in return? Give me the first thing you see when you get home. My life. For the life of that prick? I say fuck that kind of destiny. It sets him at odds not just with the other witchers, but with Vesemir especially, who he considers the root of the problem. Daryl is surprised it still bothers Lambert, but soon relents after learning more. And we get the sense Geralt isn't much less bothered, he merely keeps his feelings much more repressed. And the things Geralt doesn't say, the comments he doesn't make, we see an avoidance of much of his upbringing. His time with Eskel hunting a fork tail shows a similar attitude from the similarly aged Witcher. Their discussions are more pleasant, focused on their travels, little moments of respite on the path. If Lambert is a cynic, then Eskel stands out as an optimist. The old man she cackled. She cackled on the fence. The old hen she cackled. And she ain't cackled since. What's that song? Some old hill folk tune. Perfect for hiking. My mom sang it to me. You remember her? Just that silly song. Nothing else. Geralt stands somewhere between the two, biting back at Lambert's cynicism and tempering Eskel's easygoing nature with the realities of his life. How are things? Same old, same old. Another day, another drowner. That it? I'm a simple witcher wolf. Don't fight dragons, don't fraternize with kings, and don't sleep with sorceresses. Unlike some. Fame's not all it's made out to be. Consider myself lucky if I were you. You're right. Takes a lot of champagne to wash down all that caviar. That is tough going. Vesemir and Geralt's relationship is established at the beginning of the game, and so we don't see a lot of them together here. We don't have to, their relationship is rock steady. It's not obvious what binds Geralt and Vesemir so close. Vesemir is clearly a father figure to Geralt, but to some degree he is to all the witchers of the world. Perhaps it's a sense of justice. At the start of the game, despite warning Geralt about getting involved when trouble kicks off, 
Fizzamir is first to intervene. Recognize this medallion? You know what it means. Back off. You all right? They say witches steal young'uns. That's true. Whatever it is, Garrett doesn't hold his upbringing against Vesemir. Perhaps now Garrett is a father himself, he understands the trials of Vesemir. Being a witcher is all he knows and all he could think to teach Ciri, but there's clearly concern in doing so. Ciri was orphaned during the second war with Nilfgaard. I had no idea what to do with a young girl, so I did what I would have done with a boy and took her to Kaer Morin. Figured some physical training, sword work, Development of her stamina couldn't hurt. I remember her standing on a crumbling wall. A stone came loose. She lost her footing. Caught her at the last possible instant. Strongest memory, though, is of her coming out of her room one day, wearing a dress and claiming she was indisposed. Knew then that Siri was maturing. It was unavoidable. I was lost in the face of that. This section culminates in them subjecting Uma to the Trail of Grasses, something that's mere suggestion opens up old wounds. I'll subject him to the Trial of Grasses, but only- You fucking what?! Mind your manners, Lambert. Did you hear what- Not gonna ask you again. Uh, sorry. Looking to turn him into a witcher? Of course not. As I was about to say, I'll only apply the first half of the trial, because- Because you want to watch him suffer? Stop interrupting, or I will watch you suffer. With this scene, the witches are asked to relive some of the trauma that has defined them. Something that's tough for all of them. I had hoped. I had hoped I would never have to watch this again. Why'd you keep the table, then? The possibility that Uma might be Siri means they might well be subjecting her to the trials they'd avoided giving her before. But by standing on the other side of the table, Geralt gets an understanding of his own pain and that of Vesemir's. There is no resolution to this yet, not while Ciri's in danger, but as the rest of the game has been exploring these bonds and exploring the role Geralt has to play in Ciri's life, so too is Kaer Morin. Here, contending with his own childhood, the pain beneath Geralt's cool exterior is exposed. The thread here though, weaving it all together, is the shared experience. No matter their pain, they are able to be a family and look out for each other. Even Yennefer, who carries them through this painful ritual. Together, they transcend it. Despite their differences, the barbs that remain between them, they are all in the end there to support each other. And when it comes to Surrey, they all act together. As a family. And when someone threatens that family... You heard what he said. Take Ciri from that Isle of Mists, and the hunt will pick up her trail immediately. What then? They fight. We'll be waiting for them. Ah!